Hi everyone, my name is Seona. I'm the founder and creative director of Seona, a fine sustainable jewelry brand based in Singapore. Today I'm going to talk to you about responsible fashion and jewelry. I'm going to define what responsibility means in the fashion industry, highlighting the main issues and solutions found so far before focusing on the jewelry business, which is my true area of expertise. Take a minute to think about responsible fashion. Does it mean anything to you? Why do we talk so much about it lately? Do you happen to know any designer promoting responsibility in the fashion industry? The term responsible is more subtle than it appears. It includes three main areas. Ethical fashion, morality and professional ethics are core values at the heart of the decision-making process all the way from the design to the customer. Sustainable fashion, a concern that arose mainly from climate change and aims to preserve natural resources and prevent waste. Circular fashion, reusing already existing materials to avoid overconsumption and exploitation by recycling and upcycling. What are the issues that responsible fashion is addressing? First of all, pollution. Fashion is the most polluting industry on the planet, right after the fossil fuels one. Fashion is polluting ecosystem by releasing coloring agents, toxic products, and by involving an intensive worldwide transportation. Secondly, animal suffering. Each year, millions of animals are killed or impacted by the side effects of fashion, slaughtered for their skin, fur, and feathers. Animals also see their habitat destroyed or affected by the industry giants. Last but not least, the opacity. It is usually quite difficult to know with certainty the exact provenance and supply chain of the material, especially in the jewelry industry where raw material can be extremely expensive and therefore subject to greed. This lack of traceability allows grey areas potentially involving human slavery or child labour to persist. Here is a river that turned blood red overnight in China. Why? Pollution. In 2012, the river Yangtze turned red after a textile factory illegally dumped colouring chemicals. Here are a few figures and facts to better understand why the fashion industry's impact on the environment is so harmful. 1.2 billion tons of greenhouse gases are emitted every year and directly related to the industry. 1.2 billion tons is more than what is emitted by air and sea transport combined. To produce one cotton t-shirt, 2,700 liters of water are wasted. 2,700 liters is the quantity of water that you drink in three years. 35% of all microplastics that are dumped into the oceans come from the washing of textiles. It takes decades for those particles to disappear. The main culprit is polyester. During the last 35 years, there was a boom in production of polyester. It went from 5 million tons produced yearly in 1980 to 48 million tons in 2014. Because polyester is a synthetic material, cheap to produce and easy to dye. The consequence of this invention, tons of cheap clothes are produced and sold every year. Now, 48.5 seconds is the time that it's estimated it should take one of the people at, on this production stage to actually sew a seam. It's relentless, relentless work. This is a quote from Ali Hewson, who set up the Eden brand. We carry the story of the people who make our clothes around with us. Is polyester the only culprit here? Of course not. To avoid polyester, many consumers tend to buy cotton. Soft, light and breathable, cotton is a natural fibre often associated with quality clothing. But does it mean that it is harmless? Let's do a bit of geography and history here. Here is a picture of the Aral Sea in 2000. And here is the Aral Sea in 2014. The Aral Sea is actually a lake located between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. What happened? Why did it shrink so badly? In 1960, the Soviet decided to transform the steppes in cotton fields. They diverted the water of two rivers that flew into the lake. That was one of the most interesting ecosystem of the world before the 60s. The area now for the one third is now a desertic area where, of course, 
uh, biodiversity doesn't exist anymore and most of the species have disappeared. We know that uh, uh, pesticides and fertilizers uh, in, uh, infiltrate uh, in the subsoil uh, and then uh, reach the aquifers, the groundwater resources. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, drinking water is mainly uh, derived by wells that are pumping in these aquifers. The second main issue in the fashion industry is animal suffering. $40 billion is the turnover generated by the sale of fur. That's huge. To give you an idea, that's the annual turnover of Facebook. 56 million animals are killed every year for their fur. And 77% of them are killed for nothing, their fur not being good enough for fashion. The third main issue of the fashion industry is the lack of transparency. Basically, what is not written on the label. For the biggest textile companies, some dirty things are better left hidden. Brands are destroying tons of unsold goods to avoid paying taxes and storage fees. H&M alone is burning 12 tons a year. There are other aspects that big brands have difficulties controlling. Their supply chain. Let's take two examples you will remember for sure. The movie Blood Diamond in 2006, in which Leonardo DiCaprio played a diamond trafficking in Sierra Leone. In 2000, 15% of diamonds available in the market were estimated to be blood diamonds. Another and more recent scandal broke in 2013, after the Rana Plaza tragedy in Bangladesh where at least a thousand textile workers lost their lives. Several main actors, including H&M, made the commitment to control and enforce worker security and rights. However, a study related to business and human rights led by Center Stern in 2019 revealed that H&M's subcontractors in four different countries were exploiting their employees by underpaying them. The main reaction from responsible fashion brands is to become more ethical, sustainable and transparent to achieve precise goals. Reduce the impact on the environment by finding solutions for the consumers to buy less but better. Eradicate animal suffering by banishing certain materials. Gain transparency as a brand or state actor. The fashion industry naturally created new brands and services which give a new life to clothes. Clothing rental fashion designer using the practice of upcycling. If I were to highlight someone, I would choose the 2017 LVMH prize winner, Marine Serre, a French fashion designer using upcycling in her collections. That moon printed suit is from Marine Serre. Another way to reinvent fashion is to innovate by creating and of course using new materials, replacing leather by pineapple or cactus, cotton by orange peel, Mine Diamond by Lab Grown Diamond. By offering services such as eco matcher to decarbonize one's production, Stella McCartney has been one of the first to promote responsible fashion. More and more actors are getting on board, shaking up the old industry. 850 brands, including Gucci and Versace, joined the Fur Free Alliance, making a statement and banishing a historical material for ethic reasons only. Other brands, such as Lacoste, are making exclusive collection in partnership with animal rights organization to shed light on this matter. Last but not least, government are more and more playing their parts. The Kimberley process born in 2003, preventing the flow of conflict diamonds is now involving 82 countries. A modern slavery act has been voted in 2015 in the UK to prevent modern slavery. A fashion pact has been signed in 2019 during the G7 summit in France by 30 fashion groups representing 147 brands who committed to reduce their impact on the environment. Let's focus a bit more on the jewelry industry now. In 2018, the jewelry market was worth $279 billion with China as the main consumer. The market is led by three French groups. LVMH worth $53 billion, Chanel $9.6 billion, and Cartier $7.4 billion, representing 25% of the market. The jewelry industry is now facing quite a lot of transformations. Consumers are more and more aware of the devastating impact of fashion and are eager to know where the product comes from before buying it, playing an active role themselves. 
It is easier for the consumer to seek for information before purchasing a product. The brand image is therefore more and more important to build a trust relationship. According to a 2015 study by Nielsen Global, 72% of consumers are ready to pay more for a brand that they trust. The main actor of the industry are therefore responding. In India, banks are more and more asking for guarantees of transparency before financing a project related to the jewelry or diamond industry. Diamond suppliers are creating their own label to control the quality of their materials. The Beers, major player in the diamond industry, is also exploring the blockchain technology to trace their gemstones. Tiffany, on its side, is now always informing its clients about the origin of the gemstones and hired a head of sustainability. The story of Silna started 10 years ago when I was living in Jaipur, India. Jaipur is a historical city of craftsmanship. I spent quite a number of hours exploring the city's shops and workshops. This is when I got hooked with the jewelry industry. I decided to study gemology with the GIA and discover what is hidden behind the mining industry. Here is what I remember. To mine a single gram of gold, 300 liters of water are wasted. 1.5 tons of soil are removed. Toxic products such as mercury are released in rivers. Mining one carat of diamond is a similar story. 400 liters of water are wasted. 2.3 tons of soil are removed. 57 kg of CO2 are released. Our conclusion was clear. We mine more and more gold. When the actual gold stock will be enough to supply the production of the entire jewelry industry for 75 years. So is it possible to avoid mining? Actually, it is. We found out that we could recycle the gold components of old phones, laptops and tablets as gold is widely used in the technological industry as it is highly conductive. Cultured or lab-grown diamonds are made by using a diamond synthesis technique, allowing the labs to produce from a tiny carbon seed a gemstone with the same physical, optical and chemical properties as mine diamond. It requires electricity, of course, but the impact on the environment is negligible compared to a mine diamond, and it is easily compensable with a carbon offset service now flourishing around the world. Of course, I invite you to visit our website, seona.com, and you can also follow us on Instagram at seona to discover the brand, our story, and our collection. We are doing minimalist and high quality pieces of jewelry made of recycled gold and lab-grown diamonds.